millennia, humanity has been haunted by certain deep philosophical questions, existential riddles that even the most brilliant minds of our species haven't yet solved. What is the nature of reality? What is consciousness? Why bread always fall on a butter side? And of course, are rocks atheists? That is the question we're going to be addressing in this video. And the answer to that question is obviously no. I mean, what kind of fucking stupid question is that? But as stupid as this question may sound, there are a number of atheist activists and philosophizers out there who believe that rocks are really atheists. Under the way of thinking that you just put forward, you'd have to then accept, biological sense, no other way about it, that all rocks are agnostic. Sure including some with significant clout among atheist organizations. Which is why I thought it would be a good idea to make this video to save humanity by demonstrating why saying that rocks are atheists is silly. Now the first thing we should do, honest people that we are, would be to address the argument made by those who attribute the quality of atheism to rocks. For the first time ever, I actually spilled wine on my carpet. I must be drunk. Okay, the argument is rather simple and can be expressed in the following syllogism. Premise 1. Atheism is a lack of belief in God. Premise 2. Rocks lack belief in God. Therefore, rocks are atheists. Hmm, well, shit. That actually makes sense. I'm not sure if I can refute this one. Okay, guys, I think I need to power up my brain a little to solve this problem. Now luckily, this isn't my first rodeo, and I came prepared, and I got some brain juice here, some whiskey. Let's power up my brain. I always wanted to open with my mouth. Let's see if I can do it. Shit. I always wanted to do that. Should I just... Go for it. Now I'm gonna put it in a glass like a fucking civilized person. That is probably way too much. <sighs> okay guys, let's go. Let's uh, juice up the brain. <laughs> okay guys, now that my brain is stimulated, I think I have an idea. If you follow the same logic that people use to demonstrate that rocks are atheists, you can also demonstrate that rocks are virgins. Premise 1. Virginity is the lack of sexual relations. Premise 2. Rocks lack sexual relations. Therefore, rocks are virgins. Now, if that argument sounds silly, it's because it is. I'm pretty sure it's obvious to anyone, especially those who ever tried to shag a rock, why the label virgin doesn't really apply to rocks. I happen to think it also should be obvious to anyone, especially those who are atheists, why the label atheist doesn't apply to rocks either, but apparently that's not the case. So let's break it down the arguments to explain why these labels don't apply to these objects. We do not apply the label virgin to rocks because rocks lack sexual function altogether. They simply cannot have sex. For the same reason, we don't apply the label atheist to rocks because, wait for it, they lack cognitive function altogether. Rocks can't think because they don't have a brain. And since they don't have any form of intelligence whatsoever, they are not capable of having any dogmatic attitude in relation to the proposition God exists. <sighs> dogmatic is a Greek word that means related to one's beliefs. The branch of logic related to beliefs is in fact called dogmatic logic. Now, borrowing from philosophers Daniel Katz and Eric schwitz Goebbels, we can define dogmatic attitude as the psychological disposition or mental state of an individual towards a proposition, which can be favorable, unfavorable, or neutral. The proposition here, of course, being God exists, which from now on we just refer to as the God proposition. So let's look one more time at the syllogism that concluded that rocks are atheists. Premise 1. Atheism is the lack of belief in God. What this premise is really expressing is that atheism is the unfavorable dogmatic attitude in relation to the God proposition. 
Okay, now before anyone throws their like these rocks at me, I have to explain that this doesn't necessarily mean that atheism is the strong position of negating the God proposition. I mean, the firm belief that gods don't exist. But it does imply that atheism, no matter how you define it, is the mental state unfavorable to the God proposition. I don't want to get too much into detail about this because I already made a video covering doxastic logic and different forms of belief. What matters here is that when it comes to propositional logic, the God proposition only has two possible outcomes. God exists or God doesn't exist. There is no other possibility, period. The laws of excluded middle and of non-contradiction dictate that. However, the personal position that an individual can have in relation to the proposition can vary greatly, as you can see in what I call the atheism spectrum. But of course, atheism and theism aren't the only two positions that a person can have. If you are someone who believes that both propositions, God exists and God doesn't exist, are just as likely to be true, you are what I call a pure agnostic, an absolute fence sitter. But if you tend to favor the position that God doesn't exist, you are some flavor of atheist. And if you believe the contrary, you are some flavor of fear. All right, with that explained, now let's go to premise two. Rocks lack belief in God. As we've just seen, when we are talking about a lack of belief here, we are referring to an unfavorable doxastic attitude. And since rocks lack cognition altogether, they are not capable of having any doxastic attitude. Therefore, premise two is a false premise, and the whole argument is kaput. Checkmate, atheist. The only way anyone can still maintain their position that rocks are atheists is if they use the expression lack of belief in the broadest sense possible and completely ignore the fact that any object that doesn't have cognitive function is not capable of holding any beliefs whatsoever. This position relies entirely on semantics, on the dictionary definition of the word lack, which is indeed defined as the absence of something. But in logic, that would not be acceptable because this is clearly an appeal to dictionary fallacy. I mean, by this definition, I am drinking atheist booze, breathing atheist air, and sitting my atheist buttocks on a virgin chair. Because the thing is, dictionaries don't determine the meanings of words. They simply describe how words are used by speakers of a language in a given time according to the editors of the dictionary. If the bedrock of your argument is a dictionary definition, you are reasoning very poorly. I don't know exactly where this rocks are atheist nonsense came from, but if I would guess, I think this started as a reductio ad absurdum for the lack of belief definition of atheism, which is pejoratively called lactheism by some philosophizers. But for some atheist activists, especially Americans, this definition of lack of belief in God, the definition of atheism as a mere lack of belief in God, has political usefulness, and that's why they use it. There is a video by Cosmic Skeptic that explains that quite clearly. On Monday, I was having a drink with Mr. David Silverman, president of American Atheists, in a pub. Dave had made it very clear to me that he felt it was a bad idea for one to refer to oneself as an agnostic when asked about their religious affiliation. Uh, as far as I can tell, Dave wants people to begin using the word atheist to describe themselves in order to create a louder voice for a group of active secular campaigners. By defining atheism as a mere lack of belief in God in a broad sense, these uh, activists can also claim that atheism is the default position in relation to the God proposition. That is what they actually aim to do by making these definitions. Since human beings are born too stupid to hold any belief whatsoever, these activists can claim that babies are born atheists. Because babies, indeed, must be taught to believe in God. They not learn this by themselves, it's taught to them. At first, this argument might seem perfectly logical, but just like saying rocks are atheists, saying that babies are born atheists is also logically incorrect. Newborn humans do not have the cognitive abilities necessary to have a doxastic attitude in relation to the God proposition, so the label atheist doesn't apply to them. 
I think the core problem here is that such atheists are looking at this as a black or white problem. They seem to think that the only two possible positions are theism and atheism. You believe in God or you don't believe in God. But that is a black or white fallacy, also called a false dilemma fallacy. In propositional logic, it's true. There are only two possible outcomes. God exists or God doesn't exist. But in doxastic logic, as we've seen already, it's extremely varied. There are numerous ways a person can approach this question. And that is only after the question is known. Until a baby child is not mature enough to comprehend the question, does God exist? The terms atheist or theist don't apply to them at all. To use a different example to make my point clear, let's suppose a Scientologist comes to you and say, hello fellow earthling, do you believe that Zeno is the original gangster of Tigiak? What? Until the OG Zeno proposition is presented to you, you have no dogmatic attitude whatsoever in relation to it because you don't even know of its existence. All these terms are new to you, you don't know anything about them. Only after the proposition is presented to you, you can have any position towards it not before. And there are basically three different attitudes that a person can have when a new proposition is presented to them. Favorable, unfavorable, or neutral to the proposition. In relation to the God proposition, there would be theism, atheism, and agnosticism. And there are many more. Just as another example, you could also say that the terms of the proposition are unintelligible to you. When it comes to the God proposition, this is called ichtheism. So clearly, doxastic attitudes aren't dichotomous between theists and atheist, and presenting the solutions to the problems as such is a logical fallacy, a black or white fallacy. But anyway, I digress. So just to conclude this point, until a proposition is somewhat intelligible to an individual, there is no default position. There is, in fact, no position at all. This idea of atheism being the default position comes from philosopher Anthony Flew's paper, The Presumption of Atheism, but it is false. Checkmate, atheists. Look, I understand that everyone who grows up in a religious family or community suffers a form of indoctrination as a child. Virtually nobody is given a fair and unbiased introduction to religion, atheism, theism, and that sort of thing. I mean, if you are born into a family of Alabama and hillbillies, you will probably be raised as an evangelical Christian. And your parents will not give you a fair choice between Jesus, atheism, or maybe one of the 300 130 million gods of the Hindu pantheon. So I understand that because the way we come to learn about these things as children is very unfair and biased towards theism, there might be a temptation to try to invert things and say that the logical default position is to be an atheist and that religion indoctrination needs to occur in order for a person to believe in God. But that is not true and is based on poor reasoning. I mean, just look at the facts. Societies all over the world throughout history have independently come with God beliefs. There seems to be a natural inclination towards theism when people live in what we can call a state of scientific ignorance. However, as science progresses and we have a better understanding of the world, it does seem that it becomes more difficult for people to justify a belief in the supernatural. That's why atheism and agnosticism are much more prevalent among scientists than it is among the general population. Now, in my opinion, good atheist activism should focus on scientific education and philosophical literacy, not deconversion. As long as people are well informed and are capable of having an educated position in relation to the God proposition, it shouldn't matter whether anyone believes in a God or not. Belief in a God or religion is a personal matter. If they're not trying to coercively impose their supernatural beliefs on other people, I really don't care what they believe.
Alright guys, I think that concludes the video. Thank you all for watching. A massive thank you to my subscribers and a mega ultra thank you to all of my dear patrons. As I've told you guys, lately it's been hard for me to put out videos. I've also been dealing with a creative block. Hopefully making this video will inspire me to make more because I really want to give you content more frequently. It upsets me that I'm not able to put out videos as often as I want to. So I truly appreciate your patience at this time. Thank you so much. And if you are new here and enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. I've been Sarah Michelle and I'll see you next time. Cheers!